Thank Good you. evening. Welcome to the 14 July 2014 Board of Selectmen meeting, Town of Hampton, New Hampshire. Roman 1, hearing for public input. 1, status of the Grist Mill, Mill Pond Dam. And just a little bit of the ground rules for this. Good evening. Mr. Welch is going to give a, a synopsis of a history from the official documentation and what has transpired, what has been voted on, warrants, etc. Then we will open up for public comment, and each and every one of you that wish to speak tonight will have the floor. Then we'll come back up to the board, whatever the board's pleasure is, and we'll close the meeting. Okay. Mr. Welch, please, sir. Mr. Chairman, just sort of a synopsis. I think everybody knows the town owns the dam. We have a deed to it. We also own the flow rights behind the dam. We do not own the land over the, or which the flow comes over. That's private property, all of it, except for the dam face itself. In this past town meeting, Article 15 was passed by the town of over 2,128 to 808. That, that article appropriated the sum of $400,000 to decommission the Grist Mill Dam, known as the Mill Pond Dam, uh, in compliance with a DES letter of deficiency dated July 11, 2012. Now, what's all that mean? That means that because town meeting passed a warrant article that says the money can only be used for the decommissioning of the dam, unless we go to town meeting and change that, that's all that $400,000 can be used for. We can't use it to do studies. We can't use it to refurbish the dam or to do any work on the dam other than decommissioning it. A companion article passed for that article, which is Article 16, and that appropriated $235,000 to replace the culverts under High Street. There was a condition, however, and that is that the town had to receive $147,500 in grants in order for the, those funds to be expended. The grant was turned down by the federal government. We are in the process of finding out if we can comply for, apply for a second grant if that can, in fact, happen, then perhaps those culverts can be rebuilt and replaced. In any event, they need to be done. Our engineers have said so uh, simply because the amount of water coming through the dam exceeds the capacity of the culverts themselves. And that's why in some severe flood situations, the road has actually flooded over. So we need to, we need to solve that problem. Uh, but I, I want to make it clear that, at least from the legal standpoint, uh, from the appropriation of funds, the $400,000 cannot be spent to fix the dam. So for that sort of as a backdrop, so we all know at least what the legal definition of the ward article is, I guess we can start with public comment. Okay, and a motion to open the public hearing? I will so move to open the public hearing at which probably 4 after 7. Yes, ma'am. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Public comment, please approach the podium at your uh, leisure, name, rank, serial number, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Cheryl Hurley, and I live at 472 High Street. The purpose for requesting a public hearing on the Grist Mill Dam is multifaceted. First, <clears throat> is to convince the residents of Hampton that this is their historic property and that we should be preserving and repairing the Grist Mill Dam and retaining its historic significance. The history of this property dates back to 1686, and it is one of the town's, state's, and country's oldest grist mill. The dam is an integral part of the whole complex, which includes the pond, the dam, and the grist mill. There would not have been one without the other. This matter has a historical, educational, and recreational significance, and has conservation and environmental consequences. We're going to work hard to convince the Hampton residents, Board of Selectmen, Town Manager and Department of Public Works to repair the Gristmill Dam instead of removing it. We will be requesting that the residents vote at the upcoming town meeting to do away with the funds for decommissioning the Gristmill Dam and replace that purpose to fund the repair of the dam and meet the requirements of the New Hampshire Dam Bureau instead. Our goal is to become very active in assisting the town in exploring ways to drastically reduce the cost involved in repairing the dam. We would hope that the town would set up a group or allow us to set up a group that will work with agencies such as the Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, Director of Public Works, Town Budget Committee, <coughs> Hampton Planning Board, Hampton Conservation, Hampton Historical Society, the Property Abutters, Local Contractors, New Hampshire Dam Bureau, New Hampshire DES, Army Corps of Engineers, 
University of New Hampshire, New Hampshire Wetlands Bureau, Rockingham County Cooperative Extension and Conservation Districts, and any other agency that could assist us in reaching a workable solution to repairing and retaining this historic site. Second is to discuss the requirements of the Code of Federal Regulations, Section 106 of 36 CFR Part 800, titled Protection of Historic Properties. I want to make the residents aware of the requirements of Section 106 and the need for this project to follow the requirements of Section 106. Section 106 is extensive in its requirements, which include, quote, gather information to <coughs> properties in the area that may be affected by the project that are listed and are eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places, end quote, determine how the historic properties might be affected, end quote, quote, explore measures to avoid or reduce harm, adverse effect, end quote, to historic properties, and reach agreement with a state historic preservation officer, tribal historic preservation officers, and the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, ACHP, in some cases, on such measures to resolve any adverse effects or, failing that, obtain advisory comments from the ACHP, which are sent to the head of the agency. This information is taken from a Citizen's Guide, Section 106 Review. We have contacted the Army Corps of Engineers and informed them that we are interested in all the procedures and hearings on this issue. We have also notified the State of New Hampshire Preservation Project Reviewer. We have been in touch with the New Hampshire Dam Bureau and who has informed us that the Section 106 will be required, will be required by the State for this project to either repair <coughs> or remove the dam. Third is to remove the perception that the pond and the dam only concern the property owners around the gristmill. It does concern them, but it should matter to all of Hampton. The gristmill complex belongs to the people of Hampton. It is a fundamental part of the history of the town of Hampton, state of New Hampshire, and our country, and it belongs to you. This town takes pride in its historic heritage. The people of Hampton should not let this historic property be destroyed. Lastly. First and foremost, we have addressed several times the historic value and the need for the preservation of this historic property for the town of Hampton, but there are several other opportunities that should and could be enhanced by properly working this out through agreements and easements. This is the time to work to make this area more accessible. <coughs> this would be a great, great for educational and recreational purposes as well as conservation purposes and maintain significant stormwater retention for the town. We have heard of a resident who was willing to give a con conservation easement of a large tract of land if the town is willing to help restore and preserve the integrity of this area. We strongly believe that repairing and preserving is a win-win for all the residents of Hampton and should be considered part of the obligation of the boards, commissions, and elected officials of the town of Hampton and the state of New Hampshire. I'm also, um, would you like a copy? Would love a copy. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first, another procedural question I've been asked and uh, I'm asking myself, is it all right to leave some literature on the, on the table pertaining to what was just read pertaining to Section 106? And I know there are a few other letters that are being uh, see no objection sir yes thank you thank you so uh, I guess the clearly stated of this is we are aware and fully aware that we can't spend the money that was appropriated for anything other than doing away with the dam or, or just the point of order sir name and address I'm sorry my, my apologies name is Norman Hurley I'm also at 472 High Street married to my lovely wife for 32 years this past week so <laughs> 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 um, so we're aware that that, that money um, cannot be spent for anything else uh, and, and we are aware that it would require that that money either be changed over what we prefer that it would be just dissolved back into the general fund and then new money brought up. The reason for that is that I believe and I may be incorrect in believing this but I believe that in order to change the intent of that money it would require a two-thirds vote instead of a simple 50 plus one vote in order to change the money to, for its intent. So we're going to be asking, unless I can be, and I will be asking the Budget Committee and, and others for a clarification on that, but we'll be asking to dissolve that part of it and bring forth 
repairs. And in the meantime, we would like to work diligently with everybody involved to try and set up some sort of group that really moves this thing forward. It really is a matter of a historic preservation and a win-win situation for everybody in the town. And we're hoping that everybody will get on board with this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, Richard Smith, 101 Dunbagan Woods. I've been away for a few weeks, so I'm not aware of all of the procedures that have been going on regarding this topic. But I must say, I was shocked to hear that such an historic structure is being proposed for removal. And may I commend the two previous speakers for the, the thoroughness and the specificity and the persuasive nature, from my perspective at least, of their presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I have a lovely view of the uh, Meadow Pond area from my back deck. And I'm wondering if that might be changed if Meadow Pond, Mill Pond were to be pretty much drained of its uh, water. I don't know if that's the case or not, but my understanding is that the culvert that comes from Mill Pond feeds into Meadow Pond. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Well, the wildlife out there is absolutely magnificent. When we <coughs> settled here some 24 years ago, that was the selling feature. And I'm hardly alone in, in that uh, appreciation of that beautiful view because all the way down the street from Dunbacon Woods right down to the very end, anybody who lives bordering that pond knows what a gorgeous view that is. And I would hate to see that uh, affected. And I'm wondering if you gentlemen know or if we can find out if it would be uh, negatively affected, the water level of Meadow Pond, were this proposal to come to pass. I hope not. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> My name is Jim Metcalf. Um, I live at 63 Edgewood Drive here in Hampton. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I have some prepared remarks here. Can I pass them out? And I'll speak sure. to them, not read them. So I'm just pass them along. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to comment on the current status and the uh, future of the dam and the uh, mill pond. Of course, the current status right now is that uh, the mill pond and the dam have no future. And I'd like to try to change that if I'm, if I'm able to. Uh, there are others here tonight who are going to speak, I think, to the environmental and to the recreational aspects of the of the uh, dam and the mill pond. I'd like to concentrate on the uh, what I perceive to be the the, um, uh, the historical and the physical integrity of the structure. Now, one thing town council didn't mention, and I believe it's the case, I believe the, the town is on the hook to maintain the uh, the um, uh, the mill and to protect its its integrity. Is that is that correct? That goes back to a Warren article some, some years ago. And <clears throat> in reading the Stevens report, um, one of the things that I was a little bit concerned about is that the the uh, uh, the margin of protection for the uh, for the mill itself, in my view, is decreased by the removal of the dam, mainly because you lose the ability of the dam to hold up a portion of the storm water, of the uh, storm surge, if you will, so that there is a substantial increase in the amount of water that would be have that would have to pass through the uh, spill or the um, uh, the channel beneath the uh, beneath the, the uh, mill structure. Uh, my view is that uh, I, I have not had the opportunity to re review the calculations that are, were performed by Stevenson or by Stevens rather, but I do uh, note the fact that the margin is is significantly reduced. And I know that in these types of calculations, there's considerable uncertainty. There's uncertainty with regard to the to the loss coefficients that are used for the flow through the channel. There's uncertainty with regard to the what is the 100-year flood. Uh, I just finished reading a study that was done by Princeton and MIT that indicated that the 100-year flood is now probably the 10-year flood, and the 500-year flood is now probably the new 100-year flood. And there's also the question of, of debris and so on that can be brought to the, uh, you know, to the structure as a result of the storm, which I don't believe would be taken into account when those hydraulic calculations are done. 
So I do worry about the, I'm not, I, I'm not saying I disagree with the Stevens report or that it was, it was flawed, it's bad methodology. What I am saying is that the margin is reduced and as an engineer, we always like margin. <laughs> and so I, I, would, I, I do worry about the impact of removal of the dam in terms of the, uh, uh, of the protection of the structure which the town is obligated to protect. Second area I worry about is, uh, uh, other than the physical integrity, is the historical integrity. Um, it was mentioned already that the, the mill and the dam and the pond are really, uh, really an integral uh, entity. And it was, uh, you know, I, I actually, before I came to uh, live in the town of Hampton in 1976, before I moved to the seacoast in 1969 to work at the shipyard, I grew up in Philadelphia. And, uh, and Philadelphia is a pretty historical city. And we have, I think, in Philadelphia, a, pr a pretty, uh, pretty complete uh, appreciation of, of, of history. Uh, my father would say, growing up in the 50s and the 60s, one of the reasons Philadelphians are so interested in history is because we always try to remember the last time that the Phillies won the World Series. <laughs> 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 so when I came to New Hampshire, I was fully prepared to become a Red Sox fan. I was well conditioned. Um, but uh, the point is that uh, we, we do have a lot of, a lot of historical um, uh, uh, artifacts or historical locations in the city of Philadelphia. We have Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, Betsy Ross's house, Alfred's Alley, and so on and so forth. And all of those are important, but I would remind you that all of those are predated by the, the grist mill, which I think is pretty significant. Um, my wife is on the board of directors of the Hampton Historical Society, and I see weekly how much effort goes into finding and cataloging and uh, presenting and uh, taking care of the various artifacts, large and small, that document the story of the town of Hampton. In my view, the grist mill is the largest and the most important of those artifacts. And when I say the grist mill, I mean the entire complex, everything that makes the grist mill what it was and hopefully what it will continue to be, including the dam and the pond. I mentioned City of Philadelphia and, you know, we have, of course, the Independence Hall. We have the Liberty <coughs> Bell, which sits out in front of Independence Hall. We also have, as you may know, a statue of Rocky Balboa at the top of the steps in front of the Art Museum. Imagine, if you will, if we took the statue of Rocky Balboa and moved it in front of Independence Hall. And we took the uh, Liberty Bell and put it at the top of the steps uh, of the Art Museum. What you would have, is you'd have a broken bell and the statue of a fictitious palooka in front of Independence Hall. What gives things their meaning is the context, the setting, the place, what's in front, what's in back, what's around. These, these important pieces of, of our history. And I would like to make sure that for three centuries it's been there and for the next three centuries it continues to be there as a, what I perceive to be the most important uh, artifact of uh, the, the history of the town of Hampton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm Candy Stelmack. The opportunity in which we are engaged in today is to produce a positive process to achieve a fair and equitable result for our community in readdressing <coughs> the recent vote to decommission the mill pond. Basically, we have the power to destroy an historic or preserve an historic site, which is the finest example in this state of colonial era ingenuity. It's a museum, folks the entire complex, an outdoor, real-life museum. You can't go to the, muse the Smithsonian to see a grist mill and the integral role of water power. People will have to come here to Hampton for that. What's it going to cost, people ask. How much is this going to cost? Those are natural concerns, reasonable questions. But what about asking this another way? What is the <coughs> best way to use our money for the best result? Is it best to drain the pond, turn a viable freshwater body into another wet woodland that nobody even wants to walk through? Perhaps into a wetland that benefits mosquitoes more than humans, more than ducks and deer, birds and turtles? I hope not. 
So our goal today is that more input be allowed about the intrinsic value of preserving this historic pond and surrounding area. Money is not the only factor, especially the estimates, especially the estimates contain so many factors based on guesstimates. We want to hear the opinions of the public and this newly elected Board of Selectmen. It is not the Selectmen's objective to lead us astray or lead us blindly, without, but without more input from you people, how will they determine what is in the town's best interest? We have to concur with each other and with the Selectmen <coughs> to follow the proper course. Some of the quick points I'd like made into the record for reference is that the Hamptons Master Plan, Chapter 6, on natural resources regarding surface water resources and watersheds throughout Mill Pond and Nihilus Play, they play an important role. There are ordinances for Aquifer Protection District, which surrounds Mill Pond, and reference to the Hampton Drainage Study, which has not been updated since 1986. I would like the Planning Board to be included in any discussions of removing Mill Pond Dam. The legal issues that are pointed out in the Stevens Report are ownership of the dam wall, changes to all the abutters' deeds, obtaining legal permissions for the town to access the site and work on the dam repairs or removal. In pursuing an understanding of these legal issues, research has unveiled another opportunity. As I presented uh, some weeks ago to you, we have been working on the 1738 lot layout of the town of Hampton. It's an area from five corners to the sea that stretches north into today, today's Northampton. Those ancient lots are now all mapped, and those surrounding Mill Pond are specifically important. What has been revealed is that Mill Pond was not owned by the abutters, but by the town. If that has changed, we have not yet confirmed that. So the bottom line is the town may very well own the Mill Pond, and we believe so. And I'd really like to do, see you do the deed search to agree with ours. Defining the ownership of Mill Pond opens up many more opportunities as well as more responsibilities. In addition, the Barclay family continues to pursue working to create a conservation easement of their property on North Shore Road that will provide public access to this 23 acres of woodland and access to Mill Pond. This opportunity is priceless. In summary, we have the ability to preserve for the community a 30 acre plus area, a unique <coughs> opportunity for recreation, safe walking and biking trails, a viable freshwater pond for fishing and kayaking, a park with a, excuse me, <coughs> a picnic area with benches and swings for winter skating and frog hunting, all the adventures of my curious youth. We can't afford to lose a freshwater pond that provides what Hampton's own master plan recommends, that we, sh we, sh that we should take a watershed approach to protecting water resources and managing stormwater and other drainage issues. The DES outlines in their official purpose of RSA 482.1 that their role in water management and protection is to conserve and protect water in streams and ponds by the repair of dams, the regulation of water levels of ponds and flow of water for fire protection, protection and protection to lessen flood damages and to improve recreational facilities. And Chuck Corliss is here this evening and he is willing to speak on these issues. And for the selectmen, if you follow through to remove the dam 328 years, 328 years after Mill Pond was put into service to help the town survive, you will be responsible for destroying this once in a lifetime opportunity. We need to let the voters re-decide to vote again this fall to make an amendment perhaps to the previous uh, law that was voted on and what is to be done with the dam by providing them clear and concise but truthful information. There is no threat of exorbitant fines by DES as long as we make progress in reconciling the issues of the dam's condition. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is David Wood. I'm a resident of Hampton. I live at 4 Ruth Lane. I'm also on the Hampton Budget Committee, but I want to emphasize that I'm not representing that body tonight. I'm here as a resident and as one member of the committee. Last year I had voted um, to decommission the grist mill, the, the dam, um, 
I thought we had to because we were being forced to. I was hoping we'd get the federal grant that was going to offset a lot of the cost. Looks like we're not getting that grant. And after reviewing more about it, I'm not sure we have to decommission the dam. Um, I love history. I think that is a jewel for the town of Hampton. Not only the dam, but the grist mill, the pond. Um, I've reversed my decision, and I will do everything I can to reverse my peers on the budget committee to support keeping both the dam, the pond, and the surrounding areas. I agree with everything that Candy said wholeheartedly. I think it is a jewel that we cannot afford to let go. This is history that can't be replaced, you know, and I have another reason for supporting it. Um, one of my past careers, I was a recruiter for the state of New Hampshire, and one of my primary goals was to recruit civil engineers. And we have a problem in this country, not only the state and this town, but it, it's very difficult to get students to be interested in the civil engineering field. I see the grist mill as a perfect opportunity for junior high students, high school students, UNH students to come tour, learn what our forefathers from 400, 300 years ago um, they, they were self-educated. I couldn't create a grist mill. Um, and back then, the grist mill was a, an integral part of town. Um, recently, I was at uh, uh, a, a place in Massachusetts um, where the pilgrims landed, and they've got a grist mill that they actually charge a small amount so people can just walk around. You can actually have corn turned into uh, corn meal. And it's, I was thinking we could do that here in Hampton. And we don't have to pay salaries. I, I mean, I'm a fiscal conservative, but I would certainly volunteer to, to give students a, a tour of how it works. Um, I know that UNH would love an opportunity to take their engineering students down to, to learn about water power. I, I just think it's, it's a great resource. It would be good for our students. It wouldn't cost a lot of money. We could charge a small amount for people to take tours or walks, uh, so it would be self-supporting itself. So. I urge the Board of Selectmen to consider retaining as is. I will do my part with the Budget Committee to try and convince as many people as possible that it's, it's worth saving, and I urge the residents of Hampton to consider uh, keeping this. It is truly a gem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Good evening. Good evening. Chris Munns, Five Nersessian Way. Um, thank you for providing the public with this opportunity to uh, discuss the future of the, the mill, the dam, and the pond. I've lived and worked in Hampton for the past 32 years, yet it was only five years ago that I realized that the grist mill, the grist mill dam, and mill pond even existed. As embarrassed as I am to admit that, um, I venture to say that unfortunately there are probably many more people in town that are not aware of this historical treasure and this potential asset to our community. Last year, we celebrated Hampton's 375th anniversary. We were and are justifiably proud of our town's uh, history as one of the oldest towns in America. And one of the few remaining reminders of that past are the dam, the pond, and the mill that have been around for 328 of those 375 years. That's why it's so important that before we do anything, we have an opportunity to discuss and exhaust all, all alternatives. If we remove the dam and the pond, <coughs> we cannot go back. We will forever change the landscape of that part of town. And those of our fellow citizens that are not aware of the, the dam, the pond, and the grist mill will be deprived forever the opportunity to enjoy this part of our history. Before we do anything, we need to make sure that that is really what we want and need to do. There's no question that the dam is in disrepair. <coughs> State inspectors have been clear that the dam can no longer be operated as is, but there's no requirement that the dam must be removed. The state is ambivalent whether the dam is removed or repaired. They are leaving that decision up to us. Not only do the dam, the pond, and the grist mill have tremendous historical significance, but with the right plan and commitment, they can become an educational, recreational, and tourism asset to our community. The unique freshwater habitat of the pond can become a great laboratory for our school children to visit and learn about nature firsthand. The pond can become a recreational area for kayakers and walkers. And with the proper advertising and marketing, the grist mill can become an additional attraction for people visiting the seacoast to take in. And perhaps during the spring, fall, and winter months, it could be another excuse for people to come to the area. 
I also see the site as another gathering place for events in the community where we can bring together people from throughout the community for family friendly friendly events several of butters to the pound uh, to the mm -hmm. pond are here tonight we're lucky that they're interested in and willing to invest their time and energies into exploring all possible opportunities so that the decision we make is in the best long-term interest of our community there are certainly financial considerations that need to be taken into account but let's not let's make sure that we're not being penny ways and pound foolish by taking actions now that may be only slightly less expensive but end up costing us in the long term I hope that you will consider the input that you receive here tonight carefully and let those members of the community who are interested in doing so take another look at the alternatives for the dam the pond and the grist mill that are available before we make a final decision on removing the dam thanks very much thank you representative Munns sir <laughs> Fred Rice 15 Heather Lane <clears throat> I think, with the exception of Mr. Palmer, who is someplace in the back row there, that I am probably the next most senior citizen in the, in the room tonight who remembers that grist mill in its heyday. When we talk, there are a couple of you. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> I know you're older than me, but I'm not going to say that any of the ladies are. <laughs> um, I, I, when we talk about this being a historic and a, a relic and, and something that's very important, I think it's one of those things you have to be there to understand it. And picture this, um, in the 40s, during World War II, we used to ride our bike, bikes from all the way uptown, all the way down High Street to the beach, and then back again. And between Five Corners and the grist mill, but between Five Corners and the beach, there probably weren't 12, maybe 14, 15 structures along that whole, whole area. It's kind of a spooky ride when you were a kid, <clears throat> but we did it. But one of the things that always stood out with is this, this magnificent old building, the grist mill. And a lot of times we used to go up there and climb around it and look in the doors and try to get inside and everything else. We'd play on the dam and uh, we'd even go swimming now and then out before people thought there was a waterborne bacteria or anything. We would go swimming in the pond over there. And so maybe I've got a little bit different perspective on this that's a little more grounded in in what that place has been for so many many years uh, rather than uh, you know I appreciate the fact that people have come to this town and have recognized it uh, for the value the historic value that it has and I really do appreciate the fact people that are willing to step forward and help protect that but then there's another group of people like Mr. Palmer and myself who have observed that building from many 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 years and we'd like to see it go on for many many years because of things like the grist mill when hampton got ready to establish a heritage commission uh, in the 90s uh, i stepped forward and volunteered to to serve on it and i've been on it ever since uh, either as a primary member or as an alternate and the heritage commission is a small not very active but still it is a commission of the uh, uh, subcommittee of the Board of Selectmen and it's the job of the Heritage Commission to keep an eye on uh, it doesn't have very many functions to do but we keep an eye on some of the treasured historic buildings that we have here in town there aren't very many of them the fish houses the blacksmith shop on Barber Road the Cooperage on Barber Road uh, the grist mill uh, and there are a few others that are of less uh, uh, significance less knowledge and everything else but our job on the on the Heritage Commission has never been to maintain or upkeep any of those buildings we just don't have the capability to do it but we did have the responsibility to check on them to see how they were doing and then to let other people know whether they needed upkeep and so forth well we had quite a session with the fish houses several years back uh, but now I think they're in pretty good shape for what they need to continue doing and, and a number of years ago the, the and, and we did a lot of work on the uh, on the blacksmith shop on Barber Road but the grist mill was something else that was something that was very uh, very fragile much more fragile than any of these other structures and we knew that we couldn't do anything about it 
and there were a lot of discussions held uh, when Elizabeth Ackroyd uh, chaired the um, uh, Heritage Commission. There were, there were a lot of discussions held with the Hampton Historical Society and thank God for the neighbors, the Stelmachs, who s live right there and it, it's, it's right in their backyard. It is their backyard. And um, there, was a, there were a lot of discussions and I think that there was kind of a, an uns it was certainly not a formal agreement that um, we thought it was better that the Stelmachs and the Historical Society do that work and keep track of that because they were right there and they could see it on a day-to-day -day basis. And they have done, in my uh, opinion, they have done an absolutely outstanding job on this. They have protected it better than any other town group could have done. Uh, I think that they're looking to the future by preserving the past. And, and uh, I think that maybe the vote last year was, you know the old saying about uh, measure twice and cut once. I think we only measured once on this one. And we were ready to cut. Well, let's, let's not do that. Uh, this thing really is uh, an important building. And people don't come to Hampton strictly because of the new things here. They come here because it's old. People come to New Hampshire because it's old. They come to see things here that they can't see any place else on earth. I don't care whether it's the Quaker village upstate or whether it's some old mill or some uh, old foundry or whatever. Uh, Hampton has its piece of history and it is that grist mill and it's iconic. It really is. And so if there's any question anywhere along the line about the worth, the value of keeping that thing, no, it, it is Hampton. Uh, it's one of the things that uniquely identifies this town. So I hope that in any decisions that you make, that you will um, walk very slowly and carefully on this very treasured building. Uh, it is a, it's a wonderful piece of work. The fact that it's lasted as long as it has just is a, is a testament to how well built it was done, how well designed it was. And I think uh, Mr. Wood's uh, uh, discussion about having uh, students from UNH and engineering students come down here is very well taken for just that reason. It is a unique building. Uh, please, please do not let it be ta that be taken down. One other item that um, uh, Representative Munns and <coughs> Senator Stiles and I all serve on a thing called the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. And it's designed to come up with suggestions for legislation of what to do in the event of the possibility of torrential floods, storm surges, sea level rise, and other catastrophes that might happen along the seacoast. We are just now getting to the point where we're going to start breaking into groups to study specifics. One of those groups is going to be the shore communities. Another one is going to be the inland communities around Dover and Stratham and places where the river snakes up there. But I know that one of the things that's going to come up in the discussion is going to be the role of the salt marshes and all of the ponds that back up the marshes all the way from Portsmouth all the way down to Seabrook. That is an integral part of the biosphere that we're, we're living in right here. And it's extremely important that that be maintained in there. Uh, to arbitrarily drain one of those ponds because eh, we can do it cheap now and uh, we might be able to get uh, some advantage on it. Uh, I don't think it takes into account the fact that we have to look at this on a regional basis. Uh, we've had similar problems that uh, uh, with the, the river up on the, the, um, the, what's the creek up on uh, the Hampton, Northampton line at the beach? Uh, Little River. Crosses Route 1A. Well, Little, Little River. River. Little River. When River. Little River comes out there. There were problems there when there, there was a washout down there. Well, in studying that, they found out that that had to be, that whole area had to be looked at. You couldn't look at one little part of it. Same thing is true here. Those things are all connected. They have a bearing on each other. It isn't just the views from Dunvegan Woods. It's the tremendous uh, uh, interdependence that they have on each other as far as the overall ecosystem. So I urge you to not take any hasty steps to allow this to, be, to come before the voters again so that we can take another look with perhaps more and better information. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Rice. Hello. Uh, my name is Steve Condon. This is my daughter, Rowan. I'm, stepping, I'm sorry for stepping in front of anybody, but we're well past our bedtime at this point. <laughs> Mom's in school. Um, I just want to, you know, come and sort of testify to um, 
You know, we moved to the neighborhood on Glen Road, which is just an extension of Mill Pond Road, um, about five years ago. We naively stumbled into um, what I would consider one of the most valuable resources for her, um, as well as myself. Um, you know, we kind of moved for the walk to the beach and a you know dead dead end street to raise a family, and we spend countless hours um, up on Mill Pond learning about. Uh, you know, the wildlife, uh, the flow of the water, the historical value of the mill. Um, you know, we find turtles, fox, deer. Um, she knows more birds than I do at this point. Um, it's a phenomenal place to just hang out um, with a family. And I know I speak on behalf of at least four or five other families on our little road, Glen Road. They can't be here because they all have kids as well. Um, to say that they also spend countless hours with us up there. Um, so I am in a full agreement with a couple of folks here. I know Chris Munz had made the comment that with the right foresight, um, you know, I, I feel lucky it's sort of a hidden gem to some degree that we get to hang out on fairly secluded. Um, I think with the right foresight, it could be a tremendous opportunity for the town to take advantage of a wonderful parkland um, that serves uh, for education and historical value as well. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello and good evening, all. My name is Kevin Grondon, and I, by chance, uh, with my wife, are abutters to this scene. Uh, we are lucky enough to say that we have the best view of sunsets, we think, in Hampton. <coughs> it happens to be over this pond, and we really love it when people come and visit us, and most often they generally say, Wow, what a view and what action out back. I'd like to point out something about this mill pond that's very obvious to us over the years. I've lived in this location for about 30 odd years. I've had to drag neighbors from Mill Pond Lane that drive up the street every day just to realize that there's a pond there. Unless they take North Shore Road, they actually don't know that there's a pond there. I've begged many of the neighbors and many of the neighbors' children to come skate and kayak on the pond. This, it, the problem with Mill Pond, because all of us, whether we're pedestrians, bikers, or car uh, drivers by on High Street, the elevation is above the road, so it's out of sight, out of mind. But this is not our pond, it's everybody's pond. And there are ways to solve this issue currently, and that is we have our neighbor, good old Ed over here, Ed Mayhew's considered selling his house, uh, which is next to Mill Pond, which would clearly and obviously lessen the risk of the, the dam. I've also been working with some local contractors to try to get, and I know Fred, uh, we spoke about this, uh, Fred was talking about to do the dam, really the more permanent way would be cement, but there are simpler ways. And I have a recent, oh, 15, 20 minutes old uh, thumbnail only um, estimation of costs to repair this dam, which are really not, now that's not solving all the problems, but uh, claying Oh, up to 18 feet worth with a rip wrap of the 10 inch variety up top with small stuff put in. Uh, we're only talking about 50 or $60,000. So I don't want the town fathers to not think that we, uh, I, by chance, I happen to own a 311 Caterpillar excavator with the knuckle and all that that could do this job, direct access from our yard to get at least two thirds of the job done. Um, what I'd like to just, you know, I know that you've heard all about the historical impacts, the health issues, the excessive water flows if we do decommission the uh, excessive water flows through the dam with a storm are something that everybody will have to pay attention to, but also the loss of conservation and fun and games club. It's really an access issue, so technically really the access to this pond would have to be through, sorry Ed, Ed's house, but Ed is willing to sell the home to the town of Hampton to make a park after we've spent, and I'm not sure of the price, of the sidewalk from all the way uptown, all the way down. 
it'd be nice for people to have a place to stop and actually an outpost of sorts to get up on the dam very easily built a uh, nice stairway with some picnic benches as people were mentioning and you'd be surprised at the educational uh, activities going on just with the current uh, wildlife and whatnot never mind if we could someday help and clear the pond out not to bore you but uh, we would like to form a committee to work with the town fathers and mothers sorry <laughs> to make sure that we look at different ways to repair the dam lessen the cost keep the cost down improve access to all residents so everybody can come skate in the winter or kayak year-round and provide the educational and conservation uh, outlook post so that all the people will be able to observe nature and history for another 300 years thank you thank you Mr. Uh, my name is Bob Fair and I live at 44 North Shore Road in the Barclay residence and have so for the past 12 years. I'm one of those fortunate people who get to see that view every day. I have grandchildren li living with me this summer um, who have actually named the deer because they come at the same time each day. Um, I'm not going to go into all the historical things that I was going to mention because it's been so eloquently said. Um, but I did want to say that the we have a number of people that come into the neighborhood uh, often during the week. Um, they've stopped when I was when working in the yard and have asked me if they could uh, watch the deer, uh, the geese, uh, the ducks, um, and all the other uh, wildlife that's around. Um, and so now they just come into the driveway uh, often um, with their children. Um, some of the children that stop by have named the the uh, the, the deer as of my grandchildren um, and it's just something we'd hate to s hate to see go um, as most of you probably know Anne is um, working with the conservation trust uh, in hopes of putting her 23 or 24 acres um, of land into an easement so that um, children in the future and the residents of Hampton will be able to um, experience what we're <coughs> lucky lucky enough to experience every day now of course, if the pond wasn't there and the mill wasn't there, that would be futile. There would be no, no sense in doing that. But hopefully this will all come to fruition and we'll have this <coughs> pond and dam for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thayer. read my official letter I just wanted to say that four years ago we moved to 472 High Street we lived in Kingston for 28 years longer than I've lived anywhere in my life and I never thought I'd ever move but we live on six acres off of High Street with a 650 foot driveway down in on the mill pond it is the most beautiful place on earth and I invite anyone here to come look at it because it is amazing the deer, the egrets, the cranes, the turtles, the raccoons, uh, everything. The beavers, it's just magnificent. And I think that if you all could get a picture of what I can see every day, you would really appreciate the value of it. So I invite anyone to come down and take a look. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Mrs. Hurley. Further comment? <laughs> Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Byron Moe. I live at 30 Mill Pond Lane in Hampton. And I actually know there's a pond back there. Um, <laughs> my house, we can't directly see the pond, but we get to see the wildlife. I've had raised two children here who are now college and graduated, but remember the grist mill because we used to go down all the time and hang out down there. It was a great educational point for them. Uh, my educational background was engineering, and I taught them an awful lot about water power and the effect that it has. Uh, it's just a wonderful treasure in our community that should not go away. And my other point, my other job is with the United States Coast Guard and I spend a lot of time in waterways management. The thing that 
beyond the historical value, beyond the educational and the value to our town, is what we're going to be doing to the salt marsh. When we drain that pond and change that biosphere, which feeds into the salt marsh, we're going to have an effect. And it's going to take time to study and figure out what that effect would be, but we will affect that ecostructure as well. And it's probably not going to be in a good way. That's another thing we need to really consider before going in and changing this piece of our environment. These, these will have ripples that will affect us for generations if we take away this pond. It's a biosphere that provides a lot of benefit to our salt marsh. And we need to keep that in strong consideration before we decide to take that away. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mo. Ralph Fatello, Three Marston Way. I'm going to make this quick because some of those civilians are starting to sway back here. <laughs> this is about two things. You must preserve history and you must preserve conservation. That's it. Thank you, sir. Everybody says everything. Leslie LaFond, Moulton Road. Um, sorry, Fred and Bud, I'm not as old as you guys, but I did ride my bike down there too. Um, just on a, you know, purely historic, I agree with everything that has been said here today. One, one thing I was thinking as I was sitting back there is possibility of doing um, walking tours on certain days for the people in town that may not know that the mill is that you know the pond is there the grist mill and the importance of it and maybe having something a couple of different times you know weekends weekdays where Kimmy and everybody walk people around and show them what we're trying to preserve and it just may build up the support also it's just an idea thanks thank you Further public comment, please. Further public comment, please. Seeing none, we'll come back to the board. Selectman Wilson. Do you want to adjourn the public hearing? Yes, we shall. A motion, please. Can we have a proper time because I can't rely on the clock? <laughs> yes, ma'am, we Tell can. Uh, I have 752. 752 yes, p.m. Second? Second. All those in favor? Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We're going to come back to the board here now for a bit and uh, have some, some board comment. Selectman Woolsey, please. I, I just think there's a bit of a misunderstanding. No one is talking about getting rid of the grist mill. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not talking about removing the mill. <coughs> and we're not talking about removing the dam. There's supposed to be a, I believe, a spill. Well, no, wait a minute. Was there's supposed to be a spillway, and I'm not an engineer, but I don't believe that the configuration that's sitting there today that's visible from the street is going to be impacted according to what we've been told. That's all I know. Any further comments, Selectman Wilson? Further comment? Uh, just the one other thing, we've got to get that culvert replaced. Thank you, ma'am. Stop the flooding down there. Selectman Griffin. <coughs> well, I am also a member of the Board of Directors of the Hampton Historical Society. And I understand the importance of these historical structures and preserving Hampton. Uh, you know, so a lot of people don't realize how historic Hampton is. And by taking things like this away, it just makes it that much harder for people to realize what their heritage is. Um, I have in the 10 years I've been on the Board of Selectmen here, have supported the grist mill and the dam all the, all the time I've been here. Um, <clears throat> I think the town has a responsibility to maintain the property that they control. I think this hasn't been done with the grist mill particularly all through the years. The town purchased it and I think that they should have been maintaining it and uh, whatever it takes to make sure that it would continue. Um, I think this is another example of last year's Art of Control Board of Selectmen where three members were voted out of office. I think they misled the public on a lot of things to do with this issue. Let's take another look. 
Thank you. Where's the gravel? Um, <laughs> it's like the bridle. Yeah, I, well, uh, how can I beat that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, I think my family goes back in this town at least as far as the grist mill. Um, I can remember, like Leslie, riding my bike down there. I can remember fishing off there. I can remember pushing kids into the water down there. <laughs> so uh, that that is a great area of town, and it is a great... As you said, you can't see it from the road, so people don't see that at the time. But it is something that we need to cherish, and we, it is something that we need to make sure that we continue with it. So uh, I have no problem with, with moving forward and, and see about what we can do to preserve that area instead of... Yeah. I'll, I'll be brief. Just uh, I used to... Uh, give historical tours in Boston, used to spend four days a week, five times a day, Perfect. taking people around the air, Boston, the city of Boston, giving tours, and it used to always bother me when I went by the old state house and all the other structures that were gone, and you can't replace them, or the mm -hmm. West End where there's only one tenement less, yeah. and you can't replace that, so you can't replace yeah. history, and you have to be very careful how you go about it, so I would support it also. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank those, uh, uh, all of you who have, have uh, showed up tonight, and just for the record, the room is full. The camera doesn't show that. I don't know if the camera can pan back. Uh, speakers have left the room uh, with their uh, designated driver, if you will. Uh, but uh, the, the room is full, and there is, uh, there, there you go. You're all on camera now. Um, and uh, there have been very interesting co comments. And I, I think there's, uh, you, you folks are looking for a way forward. There, we've talked about federal regulations, repair versus uh, dismantling. There's never been talk of uh, removing the building. Um, they were talking about uh, the ecological uh, aspects of it, educational, physical safety, margins. We've heard from engineers. We've heard about uh, youth. We've heard about the importance of uh, the historical uh, importance of that structure. The town uh, last year, uh, and, and the board last year, like all boards, does the very best they can. And uh, without looking in the rearview mirror, I will say that uh, uh, the headquarters element here, the staff, Mr. Welch, town esquire in particular, in preparing the uh, the information today, and and you folks in the board having this meeting speaks very well to the town and how eloquently all of you have spoken. I think, it is, is I've heard things, if we can get a consensus tonight, we don't mean, need to make any decisions, is that um, you should uh, refine your spokesperson uh, capabilities. And you had talked about integrating with sister boards, the state and the feds, uh, and doing some environmental stuff. You could coordinate through Mr. Welch, and we could come back maybe in uh, a month, uh, or as, as this develops, but if you elect your spokesperson or your spokes team and integrate with that, you come up with a plan and then we can kind of streamline this and uh, we can move forward. And I think that uh, perhaps uh, there's unanimity that uh, you'll get your way. All right? Thank you very much. I'd like to say that this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, crowd that I've seen come out in the 10 years that I've been here. So thank you for coming. Thank you, and good night. And uh, Take a five-minute break. Could we uh, have a motion for a five-minute break? Let the room